Thank you, Chairman Miller, Ranking Member Klein, and members of the Committee for the opportunity to be here today to discuss the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management Regulations and Enforcement's regulatory program on the health and safety of workers on oil and gas facilities on the Outer Continental Shelf. I will refer to our agency as BOE through the balance of my testimony. The BOE holds paramount the safety of all operations under its jurisdiction on the OCS, with over 35,000 people directly or indirectly involved in the exploration, development, and production of vital energy resources for our nation. Every action taken by BOE is designed to ensure that risks to personnel are eliminated or mitigated to the greatest extent possible. Following the tragic and unprecedented explosion of the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig, Secretary Salazar ordered immediate inspections of all deepwater oil and gas drilling operations in the Gulf of Mexico. And the Department, along with the U.S. Coast Guard, issued a safety notice to all rig operators, reminding them of their responsibilities to follow our regulations and to conduct full and thorough tests of their equipment. As directed by the OCS Lands Act, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management shares jurisdictional authority on offshore oil and gas activities with the U.S. Coast Guard. While BOE has regulatory requirements that speak to worker health and safety in a very general sense, Coast Guard's mandate is more specific to offshore personnel safety. BOE's primary function is to ensure the operator complies with all regulations addressing drilling, production, and workover equipment and process safety management. By regulating these activities, BOE requirements create a safer work area for offshore workers. As mentioned, BOE does have general health and safety regulations that require the operator to conduct operations in a safe and workmanlike manner and to provide for the safety of all personnel by taking all necessary precautions to correct and remove any hazardous oil and gas accumulation or other health, safety, or fire hazards. BOE also has requirements for the training of personnel regarding their competency level in conducting their jobs. OXLA directed the U.S. Coast Guard to oversee personnel safety. Coast Guard's requirement requirements address personal protection equipment, safety belts and harnesses, personal flotation devices, respiratory protection, eye wash equipment, deck openings, means of escape, guards, rails and fences, life preservers, first aid kits, fire extinguishers and emergency drills. Through a regulatory change in 2002, the Coast Guard authorized BOE to conduct safety inspections on their behalf. This was done in an effort to optimize the use of government resources and improve safety compliance through the application of the more frequent BOE inspection regime. Since 2003, the BOE has conducted almost 4,000 partial and complete fixed platform inspections annually on behalf of the Coast Guard. As both BOE and the Coast Guard have been given distinct regulatory authorities over OCS activities, these two agencies have had to work together closely where these jurisdictions intersect. In 2004, a memorandum of understanding was signed by both agencies for the purpose of addressing individual areas of mutual jurisdiction through a series of topic-specific memoranda of agreements. The overarching MOU provides the basis by which the two agencies clearly articulate lines of authority and address how we can work together most efficiently. The MOAs are more technical in nature, providing detailed guidance on topics such as civil penalties, incident investigations, and floating offshore facilities. The OXLA also requires BOE and the Coast Guard to investigate and prepare a public report of each incident that includes fatalities, major fires, spills over 200 barrels, or serious injuries. On March 27, 2009, BOE and the Coast Guard signed a MOA identifying the responsibilities of each organization. The MOA delineates these responsibilities by the type of facility and the type of system involved in the incident, which agency has investigative jurisdiction, and how the agencies should coordinate and conduct joint investigations when appropriate. If operators fail to comply with BOE regulations, they are subject to incidents of noncompliance, with enforcement actions ranging from a warning to the shut-in of an entire production facility. In cases where a violation has created high potential for or resulted in injury to personnel, the violation is referred for civil penalty review. If BOE determines that a violation contains an element of knowing and willful intent, then BOE may refer the violation to the Inspector General for their consideration as a criminal penalty. For those operators displaying chronic poor performance, BOE has regulations that allow for an operator to be placed on probation or disqualify them from operating on the OCS or acquiring any new leases or reassignments of existing leases. 
Mr. Chairman, this concludes my prepared statement. I would be happy to respond to questions you or members of the committee have. <laughs>